All right, welcome to basics take three. Let's get some data. So we're going to open our, our proj file, which will bring us back to the same view. And I hope you have managed to find the Sydney Beaches data from the Our Lady Sydney um, Git repository, and you've put it inside your data file. So you've got Are You With Me and a folder called Data, and inside that you've got a sydneybeaches.csv file. All right, so let's open our script. So far we have just loaded packages. What we're going to do next is use a function called read CSV from the um, read R package, which is part of the tidyverse, and here from the here package to tell R where our data is and how to load it in. So let's put our note to ourselves that next thing we're going to do is um, read in data. And so first, let's run, make sure that the packages we're going to need are loaded. So we'll run the first couple of lines of our code. And the nice thing about when you run library here, so you can see down the bottom here, it tells you where our thinks here is. And so by default, when you use the here package, your um, R thinks that the working directory is the top level of your folder that contains your R proj file. And so when we go to tell R where our data is, we can refer to folders relative to this location. All right, so what we want to do is create a new, um, a new object in our environment. Let's call our object beaches. And you use the assignment symbol, so which is a arrow that points to the left and a dash to say we're going to assign um, what we read into this new object called beaches. And the beaches object is going to appear over here in our environment. So we want to use the read underscore CSV function, which is a tidyverse version of read.csv that makes less fewer strange assumptions about your data um, than read.csv. And then we're going to tell it that we want to use the here function to specify that our data lives in a location in within the data folder. And so relative to here, we start at the level of are you with me? And then relative to here, which is are you with me? We have a folder called data and there's a file inside that folder called Sydney Beaches. Now, if we run this line of code, you can either use run or um, use command enter. Huh, why is that giving me an error? Ah, I know. So the data file is called Sydney Beaches, not Sydney Beach. All right, let's try that again. So we can press run up here or we can press command enter. That's better. All right, so now you can see that it has read in the Sydney Beaches CSV file and made a new object up here in the environment called Beaches that is a data frame containing 3,690 observations of eight variables. You can see that when R reads in data using read underscore CSV, it does its best guess at, at telling what kind of data in it is in each column. And so um, double is numeric, character is like strings of letters, um, and integer is, is numbers. So you can see we've got eight variables. The most interesting one is this last one, which is concentrations of enterococci bacteria. So um, how do we look at that data? Let's um, add a new note to ourselves. So you can um, use the view function. So you, with a capital V, I don't know why it has a capital V. You use view beaches and 
go command enter to run that line, it will pull up a spreadsheet like um, representation of the data frame that you um, called beaches. Alternatively, you can just click on your beaches over here and it will pull up the same thing. So you can see that we have eight variables, including an ID of each beach, um, what council it is under the jurisdiction of, the exact position in longitude and latitude, the date at which this bacteria reading was taken, and then the concentration of nasty bugs in the water in the final column. So often when you read in a new set of data, you want to just get a feel for it. And there are a number of summary type functions that allow you to um, kind of explore the data and work out where you should start with wrangling or plotting. So um, one way to get an idea of the data is to look at the dimensions. So if you use the dim function, um, you get an idea of the dimensions, how big the data file is. So down here, you can see much like in up in the environment, it's telling us that it's three, we have 3,690 observations of eight variables. Similarly, you can use the structure or str function to um, get an idea of the kind of data in each, in each um, column. So this is not quite as pretty, but you can see that it's telling us what the variables are that we're dealing with the data frame, what kind of data is in each column, and then a little taste of the first few rows of data. I more often use the glimpse function than the structure because it pulls it into a nicer, um, a nicer table. It gives you the same information, but it pulls it into a nicer table. So you can see you've got the same information here, but it doesn't let it go across a line. Um, the other, other useful functions that you might want to get an idea when your data is this big, when we have 3,000 observations, you can look at the head of the data, which is the top half a dozen rows, um, and it will list out Clovelli is at the top of this data frame. And you can use the tail function to get the bottom. So you can see that each time we run one of these functions, the output of the function ends up in the console. So we have Clovelli is at the top of this data frame and we have Tamarama at the bottom. Now, um, there are packages that are useful to get um, summary statistics. So um, base R comes with a summary function. So you can run summary features and you can get an idea of the um, the range of each of the variables. So in this case, because most of them are characters, it's not actually very useful. It's good to know that the bacteria levels vary from zero to 4,900 and we have some missing values, which is good to know. Um, also, it's interesting to note that um, R has assumed that our date um, variable are characters, which is probably going to cause us some problems down the road and we might need to change that. Um, but there are other packages that I find um, give interesting summary statistics as well. So let's use what we learned last time to install a package called SkimR. So if you go install packages, SkimR into your console. Oh, you know what? What did I do there? Ah, remember when you're installing packages, you have to put the um, name of the package in quotes. Rookie mistake, rookie mistake. All right, let's try that again. Just thinking about it. It's possible my internet is not working. There we go. All right, so we've installed the package skim R, and now if we're gonna use it, we need to load it using the library um, function. So if we load skim R, 
So when I want to load, just run one low, one line of code, you can press Command Enter, or you can use the Run button up here. So I've loaded the library skim R now, and if I now ask it to skim features, oops, it gives me output that is kind of um, usefully formatted. So again, it tells us the kind of dimensions of our data. In this case, it separates out character um, variables that are in character format from those that are in integer and numeric and gives you a nice idea of um, the distribution of the data with a mini histogram on the end. All right, so we've got some data in um, to our environment now. Next time, I think we'll do some wrangling.